Hi, my name is Marcel Westenberg, and this is presentation 2.1 of the Practiver course package. This presentation goes about the influence on P of PCR on sequencing. So the overview of the presentation, so we're going to talk about multiple peaks, which you can see in trace files sometimes. Sometimes you have truncated sequences, and we're going to talk about sequencing artifacts. So the multiple peaks within your sequence. So when you see this from the start, this is mainly can be because of the presence of N1 or N2 primers. In some cases you have primers which are shorter than the original primers, which are in the mix of your primers. So for instance, here you have your primer, which gives the sequence like this. Sometimes you have the primer, which is just one little bit shorter, like your hair primer missing the eye. And so you get a sequence. So you get the same sequence in the end, but it is just one little bit shorter. So the chains that terminate at the same position will have different lengths. And so what you see then, you get a kind of ego signal. Because here, you get an A signal, but you also get a little bit of B signal. And here you have the T and the G. So basically, you see a kind of ago coming off. So you have here the T, the red T, but also the T right there. The blue C right there, but also the C here. So this is caused by inefficient primer synthesis. So the primer synthesis nowadays becomes better and better, but it's always good to use page or APLC purified primers so that you always have the full length primer. And then you get always rid of this shorter primers. So another possibility of multiple peaks from the start can be that you have non-specific amplification. And so you got, for instance, instead of one product, you get also another non-specific product. And if you sequence this, you cut the sequences, you get two trace files basically together in one trace file you know, of two different products. So you get a very mashy uh, trace files. Another possibility can be that the PCR primers were acting as both forward and reverse primers. So you have here the forward and the same primer on the other side of your amplicon instead of having this. So if you sequence this with the primer, you get this sequence, but directly you get also this sequence. So then your trace file becomes also messy. And another possibility can be is that there are still some residual PCR primer present during the sequence reaction. So you really need to purify your PCR reactions so that no amplification primers are present before you're going to do the cycle sequence reaction. So you can also have sometimes multiple peaks farther into the sequence. Like you see here, you have a nice sequence, and then suddenly you got double peaks. So this can be caused just because of this homopolymeric region, and then you can go have enzyme slippage. Yeah, so the polymerase just slippage, and you get the sequences with one, for instance, here with a T, which is shorter. And then already the C starts here instead of starting there. So you get a echo signal later on into the sequence. And another possibility is that you have two allelic copies of your loci into your sample. Yeah, for instance, and you can have different 
um, chloroplast copies or you have different mitochondrial copies um, or you're dealing with hybrids so for instance if you then look into nuclear ITS and there are two different ITS sequences into the nuclear DNA so you get for instance here a copy of your sequence which is larger here and a copy of another sequence which just has a deletion here of three nucleotides Basically, you can you get nice sequence still here, and then you suddenly start to get double peaks because then you get a G peak here, but you also get the T peak at the same position. Yeah, and when you do that from the other side, if you sequence from the other side, you get the same thing. Then here you have a T. So the first two nucleotides, nice peaks, and then you get double peaks just from this. Then sometimes you can have truncated sequences, like you see here. So you have nice peaks and then suddenly it stops while you're expecting more sequences because your amplicon was larger. So that can be because you have a very uh, secondary structure in your amplicon. For instance, you can have that when you have DC-rich uh, sequences. That's what then your DNA can loop. For instance, you see here you have your sequence, and then you get suddenly a part of DCs, and you get a very stable loop. So when you're performing your cycle sequence reaction, your, your polymerase, just go through it and then suddenly here it gets this structure and falls off your DNA and then your final sequencing just stops right there and then you get a truncated sequence. And another possibility can be of truncated sequences is that you um, put in too much DNA into your sequence reaction. Yeah, then your DNTPs uh, are used in the first cycle in the first cycles already, and you get very high peaks. And then, because there are no DNTPs an anymore, then it just drops down to almost zero. So it's always good to balance your amount of DNA which you put in for your cycle sequence reactions. So always carefully read the manual of the manufacturer when you perform the cycle sequence reaction. And then you can have sometimes some sequence artifacts, like you see here. So you get a very high peaks, and those are mainly found at the beginning of your trace files. And those are caused by, we call it dye blobs, and they are caused by inefficient purification of unincorporated dye terminator molecules. So they come off very early as a dye, very high dye. So you need to purify it better. Another possibility is that you get multiple peaks like you have here. And those are caused by bubbles within the liquid polymer of the sequencing or sometimes by dried polymer that have flaked off and entered into the capillary. Okay, so thanks for watching this presentation.